Uh, tonight we have as our, uh, as our darshanit, Rabbi Ayelet Cohen, and I want to say a word before introducing her. And for those of you who know her well from the 10 years she served at CBST, you know what an extraordinary gift it is to the congregation that she'll be a part of our community formally for the next six months. She's remained a part of the community uh, since, uh, since she left 10 years ago, but uh, this is going to be a more formal role. And before I introduce her, I just want to, I found an article that I think Judy Ribnick left on my desk that she found in her, in her files from Sunday, March 29th, 1992. That was the week that CBST voted uh, to hire me as the first rabbi at CBST. And it was in the New York Times metro section with the headline, Conservative Branch Rejects Proposal to Allow Gay Rabbis. The same week that CBST voted to hire me as the first rabbi at CBST, the conservative movement rejected a proposal brought by some of its rabbis to allow for gay rabbis. And it ruled then that the conservative movement would not recognize gay rabbis, and if a rabbi came out while they were in rabbinical school, they would be expelled. And that um, the resolu they passed a resolution saying that gay men and lesbians were welcome at conservative congregations as individual members, uh, but individual synagogues could decide whether or not they would hire them as teachers. For sure, not rabbis, not cantors, and whether or not a synagogue Hebrew school would hire an openly gay person would be up to the individual rabbi. That was 1992, and there was a picture of me and the announcement of CBST hiring me, and it was the first time in the New York Times it said, Sharon, Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum, a lesbian, who was hired to be the rabbi of a gay synagogue in Manhattan. It was the first time my parents had to deal with that, and I was a little nervous, you know, about how my mother would react to Sharon Kleinbaum, a lesbian, hired, blah, 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 blah. So I called her up, I said, and everybody knows my mother, and they're right? So I said, Mom, what'd you think? She said, what a terrible picture! Couldn't they have found a better picture? So, you know, you, you could just hear my mother's voice saying that. Anyway, that was 1992. Ayelet Cohen came in the year 2000 as an intern from the Jewish Theological Seminary, where she chose to go as a young straight rabbinical student because she wanted to change the movement and change the movement she did. But some years later, what year did you come to CBST as a rabbi? Full, you were ordained 2002? 2002 she was ordained and CBST wanted to hire her after her being an intern at CBST and the conservative movement said no. Even though she was straight, they did not want her to come and work at a gay synagogue. They had not occurred to them what to do with a straight rabbi who would care so much about LGBT rights that that would be the center of their rabbinate. They understood how they could prevent gay rabbis from becoming rabbis, but what to do with a straight rabbi who cared this deeply? And there was a massive fight that someday Maybe someday we'll write an article about what that fight was like and how that rabbinical school treated her, which was horrendous, despicable. But she persevered, and as we know, she then came to CBST as a rabbi. When she and Mark met at a CBST Shavuot All Night Tikkun, I like to remind everybody, um, and they chose to get married. They would not get legally married until gay people could get legally married. And they had a very big, beautiful celebration, a Kiddushin celebration, but they did not get legally married until gay people could get legally married. This is the kind of commitment that this extraordinary human being and rabbi has, not just to a set of rights or a set of uh, principles, but to the, the understanding of what God demands of all of us. And it is why I believe as a synagogue, and this has been controversial at different times, that we're not just a synagogue for LGBT people, we're LGBTs for straight people too. We want to create a world in which real change happens for all of us. And guess what? We are, our families have straight people in them, and straight people have gay people in their families. Guess what? All of us have to change the world for all of us. And just as feminism is as important for men as it is for women, so too the struggle for transforming rights based on sexual orientation and gender identity transforms the world for those of us who are, it also changes the world 
for everyone. So she has been a real leader and a great rabbi, and it's been a deep privilege of mine to know her, to work with her, and it is an incredible gift for the synagogue that Rabbi Ayala Cohen will now officially be your rabbi. So I'm delighted to invite you to offer a drosh tonight, and for all of you who don't yet know her, to begin to know her, and for those of you who do know her, to welcome her back. Thank you so much. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. It's so good to be home. I really am so grateful to you, to everybody here at CBST, everybody at, at my home who has uh, worked so hard to make it possible for this to work out. And really my only regret about this sabbatical arrangement is that we don't get to work together, uh, which was one of the greatest joys of my life. And uh, that part is sad, but I'm so thrilled to get to be here with all of you and all of you at home. And it feels very fitting that this Shabbat we go back to the beginning, for tonight to be Shabbat Breshit, a beginning that is new and at the same time very familiar. This origin story of Breshit, which we come back to every year at this time and try to find what's new in it. Hamechadesh betuvo bechol yom tamid, ma'aseh breshit, our liturgy tells us, the one who renews with goodness every day, every day, the wonders of creation. This is what we try to achieve as we move through the world, as we look at its wonders, to renew it with goodness every day. So here we are at this beginning, and, and I have to say, my kids have been asking a lot lately why it is that I, who am the only straight one among my siblings, am the one of us who worked at CBST. <laughs> I'm not even the only rabbi among my siblings, but I'm the one who worked at CBST. So I'll go back a little bit to the beginning. So uh, as Rabbi Kleinbaum mentioned, I came to CBST as a Cooper Burgrip Master Rabbinical intern 21 years ago. So to give a little context, right, about what the world was like then, the very first thing I did as an intern was to rush to the hospital to see a beautiful young man who was dying from AIDS. I was, as Rabbi Kleinbaum said, a student at JTS, which had been ordaining women for just over a decade and had recently reaffirmed its decision to deny rabbinic ordination to openly gay and lesbian students. New York State hadn't yet passed the Sexual Orientation Non-Discrimination Act or the Gender Expression Non-Discrimination Act. Legal marriage wasn't yet available to same-sex couples in any state in the US. Lawrence v. Texas, which would strike down the sodomy ban, had not yet been heard by the Supreme Court, not to mention Windsor v. US or Obergefell, which would overturn the offensively titled Defense of Marriage Act and secure for same-sex couples the right to marry in all states. When I got here, I was only the second intern from JTS who had been to CBST, and I was painfully aware that I was able to study to become a rabbi at JTS because of the work done by the previous generation of Jewish feminists and because of my straight privilege. If you've heard me speak about my CBST beginnings, You've probably heard me talk about how I started coming to CBST even before then for Pride Shabbat with my sister in the 1990s. And it became for us, like for many, a pilgrimage holiday and really a prophetic vision of a Judaism that would one day make room for and celebrate LGBTQ Jews. So that's one answer to the question of why I came to CVST 21 years ago. 
because I wanted to be a part of the change that I believed needed to happen in Jewish life, in Jewish institutions, in American life, in American law. And of course, for a long time, CBST operated as a refuge, a safe place to be out, a place to shield its members from the homophobia and transphobia of the world, at least for a little while. But it was never only that. And the reason I loved CBST and stayed for that decade, and let's be honest, have not been able to stay away since, is because CBST practices a Judaism that celebrates the joy and the wonder and the complexity of creation every day. If one, in, one of the founding goals of CBST, as articulated by its first volunteer spiritual leader, was to make every Jew look forward to Shabbat all week long, a value which I believe Rabbi Kleinbaum has enacted every day. It was one of the first things she taught us when we came as students to CBST, to make each of us look forward to Shabbat all week long. That spirit has entered the DNA of this community and it radiates outward. CBST reflects every color of Gilbert Baker's rainbow and every day of creation not just because the davening is beautiful and the music is transporting and the Torah is deep and the commitment to justice is urgent, although it is, it all is, but because it is a place where these are not just lovely elements, but deeply held values. Where the sacred texts are Torah and Midrash and rabbinic literature and also theater and opera and art and music and secular literature, highbrow and lowbrow, pop culture and camp, the best of gay culture, the best of Jewish tradition and Jewish wisdom. CBST is not only a place where you can come out and be out if you want to. It's a place that encourages all of us to discover who we are in a deep and full and colorful way, invites us to bring our full selves forward into the ever-evolving story of the Jewish people, joyful and unafraid. This is not a Judaism of posturing. It's a Judaism of stretching and exploring and truth-telling. Hamechadesh betuvo bechol yom tamid maaseh breishit that renews with goodness every day, all of the time, the wonder of creation, finding what is good and making it better, seeing what is yet needing to be uncovered and creating it more fully. Sometimes that means looking inward at the ways in which the community needs to grow. And of course, there have been multiple periods of intense growing pains around gender and gender identity, around Israel, around language, evolution for women, for people of trans experience, for people of color, that is hard and even painful. And sometimes many of us have felt profoundly lonely on those journeys but we have still a home in which to rage and push and heal. What does it mean to look forward to Shabbat all week long? The Torah gives us a clue, of course, in the blessing at the end of the last day, the sixth day of creation, the blessing that takes us into Shabbat. Now the whole universe, the heavens, the earth, and all they contain were completed. It's interesting that you mentioned Yehuda Berger because I was thinking about Yehuda of blessed memory, Zichron Ali Bracha, when he and I were working on the Sidor and when we were working specifically on this passage of the Sidor, this famous passage, which of course becomes the Friday Night Kiddush, we had probably one of the biggest fights of the whole process of the Sidor. Uh, he said, I have a great new translation of, of Kiddush. You have to come and see it. So we got together. And it was not only that he had a new translation of Kiddush, but he actually had a new Kiddush. 
he felt that the passage as it appeared in the Torah, in Breshit, was ridiculous. It was too repetitive, it was too long, and we could really just streamline the whole thing and make it just one sentence and it would be much better. It was a long conversation. But as I learned from every fight I had with Yehuda, and I'm sure others in the room have had this experience, you learn so much from every fight you have with Yehuda. So why is this passage so repetitive? The whole universe, the heavens and the earth and all they contain were completed. Having ended the work of creation, God stopped on the seventh day. God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, for on that day God rested from the work of creation. So the rabbis tell us that the Torah doesn't waste words. So if no word is wasted, it's a good question that you had had. Why the repetition? Why say so often that the work had ended and the rest had begun? Because it is not easy to have Shabbat. All week long we are doing the work of creation and if we're doing it right, we're not only striving to create, but we're also stopping to notice the wonder of creation. But it's hard to do. And so we have to stop. And even when we think we've stopped, as it turns out, we haven't really stopped because we're still checking our email and we still have our phone buzzing in our pocket and we're still worrying even if we did manage to put that phone away. Have we really stopped the work of creation? Have we really entered into Shabbat? It's not an accident that the Torah has to tell us a few times, stop, notice. Notice the beauty of creation. Notice the wonder of what has been created. Take that breath and rest. The celebration, the declaration of Shabbat, knowing that the minute it's over, we have to go back and keep working. And so sometimes Shabbat is 24 hours or 25 hours. Sometimes it's six months. And I hope that each of us can take the Shabbat that is offered to us, that we have learned and earned, through our work, knowing that the work of creation continues. It continues because it has to continue. It continues because the world is still a work in progress. So much has changed in these 21 years, so much has been transformed, and there's so much work we still have to do. This generation of kids growing up, raised by communities like CBST, by the work done by CBST. Kids growing up with multiple queer and non-binary role models everywhere who might not understand that the legal rights essential to their futures are younger than they are. Many of them have an expectation that the world had better catch up and figure out how to meet them to use the right pronouns, to figure it out. And yet, as fast as the world is moving, it continues to let them down. As fast as the Jewish community is moving, it continues to let them down. In so many synagogues and Jewish communities, the membership forms and the ritual policies have caught up, have evolved to the existence of LGBTQ families, and yet most of the world is still heteronormative. There is still, if not compulsory, heterosexuality, assumed heterosexuality and heteronormativity. And so even as the bar gets ever higher, the betrayal is more painful because these kids dare ask for more. They dare want more. 
They dare expect that their communities should not betray them, should not walk back what was just earned, should pay attention to what has been created for them by many of the people in this room and watching. All of us together need to be partners in the continued transformation, the creation and recreation of this world. Hamechadesh betuvo bechol yom tamid. How can we renew with goodness, be partners with God to renew with goodness? Bechol yom tamid, every day. I think of my cohort of fellow uh, former Cooperberg Master Rabbinical interns. I think about how many of them have gone on to lead communities, to make change, to parents, queer and non-binary children. How much we all think back to the year or two years that shaped us and taught us to ask questions in new ways, to open ourselves up to the world in new ways. I wonder how many of us have had moments which made us wonder, like Queen Esther, perhaps it was for this moment that I became an intern at CBST. Perhaps it was to be present with this person in this situation to help be a part of this change that I moved through this place. And so each of us can ask every day, is it that moment? Is this the moment for which I am to look around and acknowledge the wonder of creation every day? To fight this fight, to right this wrong, to understand that Judaism, the Jewish tradition, the wonder of creation, is this glorious, this miraculous. That is the work that we can create together. Shabbat Shalom.